If you aim to install GLPI on a Linux instance, this video is for you. Welcome back to the TechLib YouTube channel. My name is Artur Schaefer and I will guide you in the path to correctly install GLPI on a Linux instance. For this video, we are using GLPI on an Ubuntu instance version 2204 LTS. So make sure you are using the correct distro, but if you want a different distro, you can pour the same commands to the correct version and distribution of Linux you are using. But before we start, I would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel here, down here below. Just hit subscribe and follow up all of the next videos. First of all, to install GLPI, we are going to split this process in six steps. The first step is to install the components. After that, we are going to the database configuration. We are going to prepare the files to install GLPI, change the file and folder permissions inside our Linux instance. The fifth step is going to be the configuration of the web server and the sixth one is to start the web installation. So GLPI is a web-based system. So it just needs a web browser to be accessed. But on the server side, we need a database management. We need a web server and a compiler, which in this case, in this scenario, is the PHP and its extensions. Before we can dive into the configuration itself, we need to install the components. And remember, all of this documentation is on our website, on glpiproject.org documentation. We have advanced documentation and also our FAQ portal, where you can also find resources to your journey while using GLPI. If we get into the prerequisites to use GLPI, we need to install a web server. In this case, it's going to be Apache, a compiler PHP, the latest version, the MariaDB server, which could be also a MySQL. It just needs to be a MySQL database management. And after that, we're going to the configuration itself. If you just copy and paste these commands, you'll be able to install your GLPI on the Ubuntu. And if you want to have access to these commands, go to the link below and access this. Let's copy it here and go to our terminal and hit enter. After the installation of our MariaDB server, Apache 2 and PHP extensions, we are going to configure our MySQL to work securely. Remember that MariaDB server comes with a root password in blank. So you need to make sure your instance is secure. Let's run the MySQL secure installation script. So in this case, we're going to choose yes. We're going to change the root password. So create a user password for your root user and take note of this password. We're going to use it later. Remove anonymous users, disallow remote login, remove test database, reload privilege tables now. But if you have different situations here, please follow the steps of your environment. After we've created the MariaDB configuration, we're going to log in there and create a database and a GLPI service user. First things first, since GLPI is a tool that can be used in different time zones, we need to make sure that our MySQL can work with a time zone. So let's copy this command here to make sure that our MariaDB server can use the time zones of MySQL. Now we are accessing our MySQL database management. Remember the password that we've created before. So right now we are going to use it. And we are logged in to our MariaDB server. Let's copy all of these commands here, just the orange ones. So we are going to create a database. We are going to create a user called GLPI with its password also GLPI, don't do that. This is just a test. So don't do this. Create a good password here. We're going to grant privileges on GLPI to this user that we've created. So we are giving privileges 
to this user on this server to access this database. We are giving also access to the time zone table of our MySQL database to the user called GLPI on this server. So in this case, GLPI can work correctly with its time zones. Let's flush the privileges and we can quit. Good, clear it. And let's go to the next step. We've created the user and the database for GLPI. We also installed and created the configuration of the database. And the next step is number three, prepare the files to install GLPI. First of all, GLPI is going to be installed in different partitions, not different partitions, but different files. If you have different partitions for these folders, they are in different partitions. But in this case, we are just installing them in different, in different folders to follow the file system hierarchy standard, which means that most of the configuration files will be on ETC. Most of the front end configuration for websites will be on var www slash HTML. All the variable files that change during the use of GLPI are going to be on var lib GLPI and all of the log files will be on var log GLPI. So let's make sure we download the latest version of GLPI and also create this file system hierarchy. First of all, let's navigate to the path of Apache. And to, to show you that it's working, I have already created a DNS server to this instance. And if I hit enter, I can see the Apache is working right now. So we're going to change configuration. So we make sure that GLP can run on this DNS. Let's come back here, navigate to the var www.html. We probably has, have just uh, an index.html, good. So we are going to download GLPI, wget, and let's go to downloads, take the latest version here, copy link address, paste it here and download it. It's downloading. Let's uncompress it here and let's create this hierarchy. Now let's create a configuration so the hierarchy of system could work correctly. First, declare the files on a file called downstream. This downstream PHP is going to be inside our GLPI root folder. And inside this root folder, we have a INC folder. So let's create this file here, the I'm glpi inc downstream.php. File created. Let's copy the content of it. We are declaring that the config directory is going to be etc glpi. And we are going to also give instructions to glpi to know that the config directory also has the definitions of locals to find the files, the attachments, the logs that we want to move on our environment. Copy these, paste it here, save the file, clear it again, and we're going to move the directories. Right now we have the GLPI stored on our var www HTML GLPI config, and we want to move them to etc var and var log. Remember that the log folder by default is inside our files folder. But after we do this moving, we want to also do this moving to this place. So just copy and paste. Good. Copy and paste. And copy and paste. In this case, we changed the places for our attachments to the config files and to the log files. We need to instruct GLPI to find this file. We created the config directory and we have to create this local defined PHP file on our etc GLPI local defined. So GLPI will look for this file inside this folder following these instructions and is going to be able to find the variables directory, 
and it's going to be also be able to find the log directory. Let's copy this here and create this file here. Inside of this file, we are inserting this, saving this file, and for the fourth step, we're going to give permissions, the correct permissions. Quickly explaining, the application folder is going to be from root and all the other folders needs to be from Apache user and group to make sure that Apache can change files inside of it and also read the files. Let's do this, copy and paste all of these files And also we are going to give permissions to files and a different one to folders. Files, folders. Let's clear it and go to the fifth step. The fifth step is to configure the web server. This get a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions regarding the web server configuration. So in this case, we're going to create a virtual host file to forward all of the requests to the correct path on our server. We are going to enable the module to rewrite the URLs, which is a security issue. And we are going to also configure the php.ini to make sure GLPI works correctly. So first of all, let's create the virtual host file. You can copy all of this content, which says start of the virtual host to the end of the virtual host. And you can change it if you want. But in this case, we are forwarding all the requests from, from the port 80 to, from, with this URL, with this request on the header, to our var www.html glpi public, which is our website folder. The root directory is also the same here, and we are going to give some information so our Apache can handle correctly the request to your server. Good. Let's disable the default website from Apache, enable the module called rewrite, so GLPI can handle correctly the URLs, enable the file that we've created to the GLPI host, which is glpi.conf on sites available, copy the A2N site, and let's restart Apache. But before we start configuring GLPI, we need to also make sure that our PHP ini is correctly configured. The PHP is usually in this place, etc, config files, PHP, the version of your PHP, Apache 2, php.ini. In your environment, there may be more than one php.ini file, so make sure you are editing the correct one. Let's find all of the lines that we need to change. So here we have the lines, upload max file size. So upload max file size. Let's change it to 20 mega. So we can upload files with, with at least 20 mega. Also the post max size, let's change it to 20 or to your needs. The max execution time to 60. The max input wars and comment this line and add 5000 here. The memory limit to Apache and the session cookie HTTP only. Here it is. Let's turn it on. Good. Let's save this file and again restart Apache. We followed all the fifth steps here and we can go to our browser and start the installation from our browser. If you're here, you probably liked this video. So consider liking this video and sharing it with a friend or a colleague of your company, because this way we know we are doing a good job on creating tutorials here. On our web browser, we are accessing the same server and we are into the setup GLPI page. Let's make it bigger and let's, and we can change it to our language. Continue, click on install. We are not upgrading it. 
as you can see here all of the all of the checklist is green so everything is correct because we followed the steps before we can continue here this server is the local host if you have a different server you need to place here your URL or IP address the user remember we, we've created a GLPI user with that password this is a good practice don't use the root password so continue click on GLPI because it's the only server that this user has access to continue GLPI is going to do the whole script to install GLPI and create a database so GLPI is installed when you can hit continue so the step four you can let it activate it because you're just sending usage statistics if you click here to see what would be sent this is the only information that goes to our telemetry. This is useful information for developers to know which path to go when developing plugins and integrations to GLPI. So you can let it enable. Hit continue. This is our offering of support. If you need enterprise support, you can connect to us on services.glpinetwork.com here at TechLib. And we are going to forward you to a good partner in your place and you can have support from TechLib. And these are the default logins. You can take note of it if you want to, because on the first access, you are going to use them, mainly the GLPI one, GLPI, GLPI. Let's click on use GLPI, access it. And for these two errors, alerts to be raised, we need to change the passwords that we that I've shown you on the, the pre previous page and also remove this install PHP file. Let's come back to the terminal rm glpi install PHP and let's come to administration users and change all of these passwords. Let's come back here. Good. GLPI is installed in your Ubuntu 22.04. Thank you.